Hello, everybody, and welcome to this episode of the State of Mirrorless, an official uh, F-Stop Lounge podcast uh, with your hosts, Ugo Che and Andre Apple. Um, today, our guest will be Matthew Maddock from the PhotoMed website. Uh, hi, Matthew. How's it going? Hi, Andre. Very well, thank you. Andre, how are you? I'm great, thank you. Great. So, uh, Matthew, let's uh, let's talk a bit about yourself. Uh, what's your background? What, what do you do in your life? And especially a bit about your your website. Uh, what was the the idea behind Photomed and what the website is about? And anything you want people to know about it? Okay, well, my background is really in IT. Um, I was trained in IT, but I've always had an interest in photography through my whole life. Um, and did a lot when I was younger and then got into work and sort of didn't have time for it really. Um, and about five years ago now, I picked up a camera again, uh, which happened to be a Nikon DSLR at the time, um, and got into sort of wildlife photography and a bit of travel photography. Um, and kind of started to enjoy it a bit more and then took a day out in in Paris with a backpack full of gear um, and at the end of the day I was dead <laughs> my back was killing me and I thought there's got to be a better way than this um, and that's when I started looking at the mirrorless systems and initially I bought the uh, the Olympus pen which was great um, but the quality for me wasn't quite there so then I looked into the Sony Nex which I really liked the image quality from but it was too much of a computer for me and at the time Fuji had just released the X100 which looked fantastic and I thought got to have one of those <laughs> um, so I picked up one of those and um, started to enjoy photography again it, uh, you know, it changed the way I took pictures um, but at that time, I was I was just doing it as an amateur. Um, I was living in France, and then I moved back to the UK, and so I want to do this a bit more professionally. So I started looking for bits of jobs and things. Um, started doing a bit of commercial work, working with a, a local marketing company, doing some of their jobs. Um, but also, I continue to do it for myself and a lot of travel, especially with the Fuji, start to do travel photography more and more. Um, I think where to go from here. <laughs> so the, the, the Photomad blog came from my sort of transition from DSLR to mirrorless and it was kind of following my, you know, where I went with that and my experiences of using mirrorless cameras from coming from the DSLR and then about two years ago, it was at Photokina, I decided I sort of wanted to go all Fuji and then dedicated the blog to sort of the, the Fuji cameras, really, because they're the ones that held my interest. Everything else I kind of didn't stick with because they didn't quite fit what I wanted. Um, but I just found the Fujis were a really good match for me and my style of photography and what I liked. I think it also took me back to sort of my earlier years when I used to shoot film cameras and all the controls were in the right places and you know you had to take it slow and steady and that's that's what the Fujis do. So are you now a full-time professional photographer? Did you get it right? No, I, I, would, I would sort of consider myself to be semi-professional in that I don't earn a full-time wage out of photography. I have other things that I do and I'm, to be honest I'm quite happy with that. I don't want it to take over my life because I think for me I enjoy photography and I don't want to have to take jobs that I don't want to do or I'm not interested in just to get money in. Yeah. So Thanks. I very much enjoy the sort of personal side of it as much as earning some money out of it from time to time. Well, well, so you do travel landscape but I see you have got a um, some studio equipment behind you. I do some studio work, but it's not where I'm comfortable. My my favorite type of work is environmental portraits. So that's what I love to do. And what I'm trying to do at the moment is build up a small portfolio of uh, sports and outdoor activities. I live in the Lake District, and it's the ideal place to do that. 
So I'm trying to build up a, a portfolio of sports and outdoor activities to, to then take to the local companies around here and say, this is what I can do, you know. Have you got any jobs for me? <laughs> <laughs> Not in that area. <laughs> I would like to visit that area. Oh, it's, it's beautiful. To see. I, I do landscapes here almost by default because how can you not when you're in such a beautiful area? Sure. So, so what is in your camera bag currently? What, what do you shoot with? You said Fuji's, but what models, what lenses? Um, all Fuji's now. Um, X100S. I have an X-T1, an X-E2, and an X-Pro1, but most of the time I'm using now the X100S and the X-T1 just because they're the best ones to work with. And My latest lens is this Zeiss Tuit, the macro lens, which I absolutely love. It's very slow, but it's an absolutely fantastic lens. Uh, the other lenses I have, I have the 14mm, I have the 23mm and uh, the 18 55 which I was hesitant to buy, but once I tried it, I realized how good it was, and that sits pretty much all the time on my XE2, kind of as a general go-to anything camera. Uh, no long lenses? I've got the 55-200, which I... Uh, I really like. Uh, my especially on the, the image stabilization in the, on that lens is uh, is just fantastic. Yeah, it's very good. And I did have the 55 to 200, but it's not really the sort of thing I do. So I I sold it because I just wasn't wasn't using it very often. Do you still own any DSLR equipment? Not at all. No, no. The last one I had was a D800, and yeah, technically it's an amazing camera, but carrying it around and for me the benefits over the Fuji just aren't enough to keep two systems going. So what do you really like about your mirrorless system? Why do you prefer it to your <coughs> DSLR? Aside from um, the way, <laughs> or maybe that's just the only issue. It's It's not particularly mirrorless. I think for me it's the Fuji system and how it works and just how they've designed the cameras to be honest yeah the size and weight is fantastic and I can carry around in a small bag two cameras and three or four lenses that would take me at least a whole backpack in DSLR and that is a big advantage and that is why I started getting into it but I think for me it, it's actually the, the Fuji you know the dials are here, everything's obvious, the aperture ring's here, and it's just a nice way to work. And um, I think that just, it did take me back to my early days of photography and when I used to enjoy it a lot. And the DSLR kind of, when I got my DSLR, I did get into the habit of just pressing the shutter button and holding it down and hoping I'd get one shot in 50 that was good. <laughs> and, and going back to this slightly slower system, although many people think that's a disadvantage, I think it's an advantage. It, it makes you think about taking a picture before you actually take it. And I, I think that's improved my photography hugely over the last two or three years. Great. Is there anything that you miss, that you regret not having any more, once you um, given, given your DSLR away? Initially, I would say perhaps some of the lenses. Uh, until the last couple of months, there wasn't really a wide-angle choice on the on the Fujis, but now there's the 10 to 24. That's that's covered. Um, the other thing, perhaps, is a flash system. A good TTL off-camera flash system is very much missing from I think all of the the mirrorless camera range, not just Fuji, but any of them. And Fuji don't even do a, an off-camera TTL lead. You have to go and fiddle it by using a Canon lead, which isn't ideal. So from that point of view, yeah. But for the most part, I've kind of my style of photography has changed to match the mirrorless systems, and I actually think it's got better because of that. 
Good, good. Um, so you, you think your, your future definitely seems to, to lie in this direction, but do you think that the, the industry as a whole, in the world of professional or amateur photography is uh, moving more and more towards mirrorless systems, or there will still be DSLRs around in like five years from now? What, what I think that there, there will still be DSLRs around. I think DSLRs will become more of a speciality item for perhaps sports and serious wildlife photographers. Um, but mirrorless is definitely starting to become more mainstream. I, I live in a very touristic area and you get a lot of visitors and especially the Japanese visitors. Even a year ago you would see them carrying like two 5D Mark III's, one with a 24 to 70 and the other with a 7200 lens around their necks. Um, and even in, in a year, this year I've seen a lot more carrying the mirrorless systems and it's quite st striking how that's changed in a year actually. So I, I think there, are, there will always be a place for DSLR. It's certainly there are advantages to it, but mirrorless is definitely for the majority of people the way to go. I, I think one of the problems is getting over the, the idea that a lot of people think to get a better picture it has to be a DSLR. There just there's that mindset that you have to have a DSLR to take a better picture. I think I think that's slowly changing, but it, it does take time. Yeah, just uh, a few days ago, a um, conversation on a Facebook group. Um, you know that they always happen. A full frame versus a crop sensor, <laughs> and people that say you cannot get that kind of images with a crop sensor. Look at this image, blurry background and bokeh and everything, and you get that with a APS-C sensor and so on, and then somebody shoot, shows a photo taken with a crop sensor camera, which has a beautiful blurry background. And they say, well, but this, you cannot get that ethereal background or ethereal image uh, with an APS-C sensor. So I stopped following that group because <laughs> that was too much. <laughs> <laughs> for me to take some people would justify their, their choices uh, anyway they would find any reason to justify the choices uh, whatever they are I mean people would just I heard people say that they use a, a mirrorless system because it's lighter and then they mount a, a huge lens on it and it ends up not being that I mean uh, the X-T1, if you compare it with uh, Nikon D7000, it's not that much lighter, smaller in the end. But I agree, it's a, uh, it's a different. It gives me a different feeling at least um, with the dials and so on. It's not plasticky, so I don't care much about weight and, and so on. It's nice to have a lighter weight, but it's the feeling that those cameras give me at least. So. Justified with that. I don't know about you. <laughs> no, very much so. I think, um, like you say, particularly the, the weight aspect of it, it's not the body because you can get small DSLRs if you want to. It's the, if you want to carry a selection of lenses, they're just so much smaller for the for the same quality. In the Fujis, you can get a good selection of lenses in your bag if you want to do that. Whereas in a DSLR, you'd need a bag to just carry your lenses. Um, but yeah, and I think perhaps the new Fuji lenses that are coming up, the, I think it's 16 to 50 and 50 to 140, 2.8s, they're huge when you go and see them. And I, I almost think that's defeating the point. If, if they're saying the size and the weight is, is the advantage of it, what's the point of them producing these huge lenses? Which you might as well just go and buy a DSLR. <laughs> All right. So, do you have uh, maybe any images to, to share that we can see some samples of your work? And we can talk a bit about the equipment that you use to, to take those. I do. Are you going to have to help me show? Help okay. me sharing them out there. Okay. So this is one of my commercial images, which was shot for for a company that makes. 
um, giant things out of plastic, really. So the image here is um, is a machine they use to melt the plastic inside of a mold. And this is kind of goes back to, I like the environmental portraits. I like to put people in pictures. So um, this was just a snapshot with the X-Pro1. They actually wanted pictures of their factory and, you know, their equipment in use. They didn't really ask for this sort of thing, but because I, I enjoy doing it, I, I decided to take some pictures of people using stuff. And actually, these this image was the one they used on their main page in the end. Um, this was the X Pro One. I can't. I think it was a 35 mil, and you know it's a slow camera, and you've got to, especially in an environment like this where it was actually quite dark, you've got to pre-focus and just wait for the moment to take the picture, and just get it right. Whereas probably if I'd had the DSLR, I would have just been snapping away, and maybe wouldn't have quite got the right the same shot, if you know what I mean. Yeah. So right, this Natural light, or yeah, these are these are all natural light pictures. I had at the time I had my D eight hundred with me as well, and and there was a few more lens choices. I had a, I think it was a twelve mil Sigma, which on full frame was you know incredibly wide, which I used to put inside some of the molds, which I at the, I couldn't have done with the Fujis at the time because there wasn't a wide angle lens. Um, this is this is part of the the series I'm doing on sports in the in the Lake District, and this is on top of one of the the hills around here. I took this with the X Pro One and the Zeiss 12 mil to try and get as much of that that background in as possible, uh, and I carried a lighting kit up up the hill, which was the Ellen Chrome Quadras, um, and we did a series of these these images this one here can you you can see that one now yeah that was shot with the X100S and this is something i actually couldn't have shot with a, a DSLR this was this was a bright uh, summer day and with the X100S i was able to use the leaf shutter to sync the flash at a thousandth of a second which as you can see, pretty much killed all the ambient light there. And this is the sort of style that I'm I'm trying to develop and and come up with for for this series I'm producing. And uh, then I'll go. I want to. The next one I'm going to do is a mountain biking one. Uh, a bit bit more action in there. Okay. And and what do you think about the the AF speed of those uh, cameras? I mean, you said you used the X100S for it. Yeah, is it and quick? Do you pre? I pre, I pre focus. Oh. I generally pre focus everything. And to be honest, even if I was using a DSLR, I would probably still be pre focusing because you need to know it's right at the time. I know DSLRs do have that AF advantage, um, but they still miss things. Anybody with small children will know that even a DSLR can't keep up with them. <laughs> So <laughs> it, it, it's, it's all about using what you've got and just getting the best out of it. And, you know, a lot of the time I am pre-focusing. Even the X-T1 is supposed to be considerably faster, and it is a lot faster than my X-Pro, but it's still, you know, you still have to use little techniques like that to, to get it right. Uh, in a way, just pre-focusing it, it let me concentrate on what she was doing rather than worrying about it focusing because I knew the camera was absolutely set up ready to go as soon as I pressed the button it would take that picture so you can see here she's just I just caught her just slightly off the ground in motion which is what I wanted to do whereas if I was worrying about the camera focusing you know I might have missed that moment okay maybe you can show another one yeah um, some of my and your landscapes or landscape ones. This, what I'm trying to do now is take one camera and one lens out with me if I'm I'm traveling, because I I find if I take too much stuff out, I'm just worrying about you know 
which lens should I have on, should I change to this lens, rather than actually looking for, for images. So I took out the X-T1 and this was the 50 mil Zeiss. And there's lots of very pretty landscape pictures around here, but I wanted to pick something that was maybe a little bit different. I did a series of these square black and white images. I have another one here. And I just think perhaps they show the Lake District slightly differently to, to the usual stuff you get. Yeah, these are very nice. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of very pretty, pretty pictures. And it is, it's hard to find something different to shoot around here because there's so many photographers taking landscape shots around here. As I said, the landscape, I, you kind of have to do it here. It's not, I don't particularly do it commercially because there's, I think there are too many people doing it to make money out of it. I do it for the enjoyment of doing it, and, and I'm, I'm happy with that. Um, another series I've started doing using this size to it are very simple pictures like this. I saw this. I can't remember what it's called now. <laughs> dragonfly. It's not actually dragonfly. It's something, something slightly different. And he just happened to to land on this piece of grass near me, and was fortunate to stay <coughs> there for for me to be able to get about four or five frames of him. I just thought this was a bit, a bit of a funny little cheeky image, and I like the way that his um, the shadows from his legs just run across the grass there. And so, uh, looks like it's a very versatile system. That you oh, very much so, yeah. And what I try to do is I try to produce short series of, of similar images. I can't say that I, I have a particular style because I, I enjoy doing lots of different sort of things, but I like to take a series of very similar images, so I have in this series just a few that um, look, you know, along the same lines. So that's another one, and that's another one of the same sort of thing, and they're all, I try and take them with the same camera, the same lens, and I always apply the same processing to them. Very nice. So maybe you can now, before closing, talk a bit about your Photoman website, especially your store. What 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 it's all about? What are the contents of the website and where people can find it? Yeah, sure. Um, <clears throat> well, the website's photomad.com, and as I said, a, a couple of years ago, I. I dedicated that across to Fuji because I was using, I'd gone over to using Fuji systems then. Um, and I write reviews on there and news and whatever I, I think might be interesting for people to read to do with Fuji. Occasionally I'll bring in some of the other stuff if there's something interesting coming along. Um, but last year I was using my X Pro with the Fuji grip and getting annoyed with it because every time I had to use it I had to take it off to get to the battery and the SD card and thought there must be a better solution so looked into it and had a grip designed this is an XT1 version um, so I could get to the SD card and the battery without having to take it off but I still could um, hold the camera better because I I like to have a little bit of a grip on a camera I find it helps me just feel a bit more secure with it um, and at the time I was starting to use the three-legged thing tripods and they have the standard Arca Swiss head on there so this grip has an Arca Swiss connection on the bottom so you can put your camera straight onto your tripod without a plate uh, that's the other problem with the Fujis is if you put uh, a tripod plate on the bottom it covers up the um, the battery compartment so you have to take that off <laughs> to get into your camera every time which is a bit frustrating especially when I came from a DSLR where the the port would be on the side to get your SD card out so it's just easy to do that um, and with a, with a shop that machine. Yeah, 
Yeah. Yes, I do. Yeah, I I outsource everything. I mean, my speciality is the ideas, and I, I rely on everybody else to help me out with <laughs> with designing stuff and getting things made and everything like that. I, I can't do everything. Um, so it kind of just I had a few produced and they sold really well. So I thought, well, I'll do some for other cameras and then. I added various other products to the shop and recently I've just started designing a little thumb grips for for the three Fujis. Um, X-Pro 1-1 should be being produced this week I hope from my manufacturing <laughs> partner here. Uh, and it's, uh, yeah, sorry. Right. You also sell some tripods there. Is that I do, I've just, um, I teamed up with three-legged thing. I've used the this is a three-legged thing, Keith, which I've used quite a lot myself, and I've just teamed up with them to sell their tripods on the website because they fit with with the camera. Basically, the the shop is uh, it's based around Fuji systems, really, and it's everything that I've found personally useful. It, it, you know, with my Fujis, I hope everybody else will find useful. And here's somewhere you can go and and get all that that kit. Good. So this is the, just a close. I would like to to know if you can name some photographer that you can recommend that is using mirrorless systems for our uh, listeners or viewers to to explore. Um. I think the person that I, I admire the most at the moment using mirrorless is probably Alex Lambrex. He's, he's doing things very differently to, to most people and he's, he's got this ability to kind of take the technical out of, out of taking pictures and he just picks up the camera and takes his vision of the picture and his artistic view is, is what I admire because I'm a technical photographer. I understand how they work. I know how to light things. I know, you know, that side of things. And my artistic side is where I struggle. And I find his ability to to be very different from everybody else um, is really great. And he's using the X100 and some of the other Fuji cameras. I think one he's picked up recently is the X20, and some of the pictures he comes out with from the X20, which most photographers would think is just a, a point and shoot or a very nice point and shoot, they would just think of it as a standard point and shoot camera. He's, you know, he can pick that camera up and take some great pictures with it. Great, thank you, uh, Andre. Do you have any questions or? Uh... I'm perfectly happy. Thanks for being here, Matthew. <laughs> So Matthew, uh, you said photoman.com is your website, and we will put that in the show notes together with uh, if you can give us a pointer to Alex Lambrex's uh, website. Any other places where people can find you? Uh, Facebook, Google+, Twitter, usual places I can imagine. Yep, I'm on all of those. <laughs> if, you just do a, <laughs> if you search for Photomad with two Ds, you'll find me pretty much everywhere, I think. Good. So thank you very much for being our guest today. And we hope to, to see more of your upcoming work with uh, Fuji cameras in the future. Thanks. Yeah, thank you for asking me. And thanks, Andrew, for taking part in this. <laughs>